Okay, good. So DeMarcus, how are you doing? I'm doing well, man. Just got back from homecoming. H-U-H-C 23. Shout out to it? all my pirates out there. Special shout out to the marching force. And uh, extra special shout out to Sly Force. Holding it down, as we always do. So how was um, homecoming? Mm -hmm. It was great, man. I can't. I cannot speak enough words about homecoming. And at the same time, there are no words to describe it. Like specifically this homecoming, because mm -hmm. this was the, this was my 10 year, my class of 10 years. So class of 2013, our 10 year, our 10 year homecoming, um, the 40th year for uh slide force, uh, RDOs. Did they do anything? 20th for year, um, specifically at Hampton. <laughs> um, yeah, it's nah, we didn't. Um, but like whenever I go to homecoming, it's always like that reunion, that family feeling like it's, it's, it feels very feeling like when you eat a really good meal and you, you know, you feel satisfied, you get the itis and all that kind of stuff. It feels like that, like a warm hug you can't feel. It's like, it's being amongst the community, being amongst like people who knew you when you were like younger, when you were like still finding yourself and to see everybody's growth 10 years later. Like people, people have grown, have like people have grown up, grown up, uh, glowed up, uh, and you know there are there are some folks who have blown so up as well did in more you ways than one. Have a meeting with any ones that got away? Um, no, I mean I'm sure I saw some folks that like. When I saw him at, when I knew him at Hampton, I was like, ooh, you know, I want to talk to them. But it was, I didn't have that feeling like, oh, you know, this is the one that got away or whatever. Um, or unless you were asking about no, someone specific, didn't specific. know that person I, was I don't, I don't really know. <laughs> but I'm just asking, like, you know, people say that they go to homecoming and, like, husbands and wives okay. get thrown yeah. out the window. So just asking if you had a little experience, a little rendezvous. Mm hmm. A little rendezvous. <laughs> no, nah, man, no. Nah. You know, I'm kissing tail. Um, but nah, it wasn't no meetups like that. You know, got my girly and everything back here in San Jose. So I wanted to worry about that kind of thing. But, you know, this, he folks, and I was just like, damn, like, you really done turned your ass up. Like, you used to be a little geek um, at Hampton. You know what I'm saying? You was a little strong, wow. strong little something. But now, done filled out. Got your woman's body. Okay. Okay. But, uh, Back to homecoming. No, so I no have side. two questions. Um, mm -hmm. I, and I'm just going to add some both and you can answer them both. Um, how yeah. was the game and how was the little concert thing with SWV? Mm. So the concert lit. SWV came on, they was fire. Like, I had a, I've never seen SWV, SWV perform. But I expected them to come out with like stools, be you know, or just like stand still. They came out with some dance routines. They was, you know, mm -hmm. doing shit. Oh, you didn't watch the reality show? Okay. Okay. I don't. Okay. I don't. Okay, okay. But all that to say, I thought they were older than what they were. They look good. They look like they might be in my age range, low key. I mean, they're like fifty something. Well, that's me right now. <laughs> <laughs> Like, I think that one of them has a son that's, like, about five years younger than you. Can you be my little brother? <laughs> <laughs> um, And how's uh, the game? Know. Oh, boy, okay, okay. Go ahead, boy, go, ahead, go uh, ahead. My boy, JP. JP and Ariel and Ariel's wife, Dom, got to meet SWV because he was, he, he knows somebody that was, like, that worked with their manager or something like that. And so they was like, oh, they gave us like some free tickets to get in. So I had one of my home, I had my homegirl to live out there, come out with us. Um, but I had walked away to go meet her because she came late. And then they and then that's when they manager, SWV's manager came and got JP and they went backstage. I was like, damn. Why would you walk away? Because I had to meet my friend who had just got to the uh concert. Your friend is late. She is gone. She has a lost cause, a casualty of war. 
I know, I know. But you know, I decided to let uh Ariel and Dom have it because I as I like SWV, but I'm not no big fan where I like know their names individually and you know, yeah. I can like name you know, list off songs and nothing like that. So decided okay. to let a real fan have it. And then okay. the game. No, 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 no. Hi. How was Big Boy? Oh, Big Boy was dope. Big Boy came out and did his thing. Like, yeah, him and Sleepy Brown. Okay, they, okay, they, okay. they went off. Mm-hmm. So uh, I was talking to somebody that's like, ooh, I hope they, I was talking to Mike, Mike McCall, and he was like, ooh, I hope you bring out Andre. And I'm like, he's not fucking bringing Andre out here. I like, ain't no way that's happening. <laughs> not at Hampton. I mean, um, I can see it, see it happening at the New Hampton. Because the New Hampton with this new president, they doing it all. They got they got like Nickelodeon on uh sponsoring shirts and shit. I'm I'm gonna show it to you. Hold on, let me go grab it. You okay. might have already seen it. I have not. Oh no, no, that's not well, that's a Nickelodeon. Um yeah, that's that's Nickelodeon licensing. That's by LRG. And they have uh the Nickelodeon characters on a whole bunch of different HBCUs, but that's a licensing deal by LRG. Yeah, yeah. LHP is what it's oh, LHP, LHP. Yeah, I'm about to say that don't seem like something that LRG would do, but they got another one that got Susie on it. That's dope. Um, so like, it's a whole new Hampton out there. And I went to visit some of my old professors, found out they done got rid of my department. So there's no Bachelor of Arts at Hampton anymore. No more colors. Fuck you, Jared. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Really? Wow. So yeah, they had got rid of theater, but then they got rid of theater too? They had got rid of theater. They had got rid of all the arts programs. So theater, um, fine arts, graphic design. I think those might have been the only three, but they Don't um they brought Howard. back theater. They brought back theater because you know the girl that's done that's that that's done won the Oscars for uh costume design on uh Black Panther, she graduated from Hampton. Ruth, yeah, she yeah. she um she's a Hampton alum. Mm -hmm. And so there was like a rumor at one point that she was gonna give like a whole bunch of money back to the theater department. So they brought the theater department back. She ain't never get no money. As far as I know, this is the way I this is the way the story was told to me. Ruth, if you're listening, I don't know whether you gave that money or not. I don't know what's I don't know what's going on, where you are in that process, if there ever was a process, if you ever said it. I'm just telling you what I was told. Just reporting the news. I don't make it. Dang. That's messed up. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. And how was the game? Did you freak in? Mm, I freaked I freak back into the, the, uh, into the uh, communication. Uh, yeah, yeah. I was late for the game. I was like, I probably got there like right before halftime. Okay. Yeah. So you was like, cause you was walking around at the tailgate, or no? Oh. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. No. Okay. So how did Hampton do? How did Hampton look? In your elder opinion? Um, like the campus, Hampton's, Hampton. No, 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 no. I mean the band. I know oh, how the, the band? campus looks. Ten out of ten. Small. The band is smaller. Still sounds great though. Still sounds great. Um, and like the trombones, shoot, killing it. Killing it. Like the trombone players they got now, like, yo, like every single person can fucking blow. Like if you've been watching my stories, like them, like the uh the folks, like the the one guy. Josh. Josh, uh, yeah, Josh. I didn't know you knew his name. But yeah. I was up there for some years, so definitely. Mm. Fair enough. Yeah, Josh, man, Josh can fucking blow, but so can um Shit, uh, Shala and uh, a lot of the other folks that's you know that's there that have graduated since you know I've been gone. But yeah, man, killing I mean, the band looked good. The band looked good overall. I gotta say, I would say the alumni band is really what was like throwing a wrench into like the band's performance because the alumni band, as much I don't think they practiced that much. Um, because I know I didn't play and I know that. If I was playing this year, I wouldn't have been practicing like that. Because they only gave the music out like two weeks before homecoming. And do you even have a trombone? I don't. I do mm. not. But uh, well, boy so, JP said he's going to get me one. So how how did the, the alumni band throw a wrench in things? Because 
you know, with the alumni band, you have everybody coming back from like 1990 or whenever to like last year. And so the folks that were there last year, that like the fresh alums, like they they know exactly what's going on. They know all the movements. They know all the songs. They know what all the signals mean. They know when to stop. They know when to start. Folks from the nineties and like as you, the further you go back, the less the, the less true that is. Like the older folks, unless they was like really practicing, unless they was like really trying to get the shit back under their fingers, there was trash. Like folks holding over, folks playing too soon, folks playing wrong notes. Like it's the alumni band is the alumni band. We're there to have fun. Okay. And and did y'all have fun? Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, I am very, very glad that you had fun um, posting a lot of great, great footage. Um, okay. How has life been back in Oakland, San Francisco, San New Jersey? Jersey? I don't know where you are. But um, since you came back, uh, have you been up to anything? Mm-hmm. What have been up since I get got back? Um, not a whole lot. Uh, back to work. I got back on Monday, and then had like most of Monday to just chill. Tuesday was work from home, so but it's just been like a lot of meetings. Like I came back to work and found out that like a lot of different decisions had been made as far as like the projects that we're working on, and so like where I left my project is not where it was when I got back. It was just like. Mm. It had been like completely turned on his head, but I will say that it seems like there's more alignment and there's more investment, and so it seems like it's in a better place. But I think we're like spinning our wheels a little bit instead of just like you know getting this thing done. Nice. Well, um, that's good to hear. Uh, me, uh, if mm-hmm. you're wondering you how, huh? How have you been doing? Yeah, so it's been a lot this October, like a mm. lot. Um, so you know, my car got stolen. I talked about that last week. Um, the mm. last day with my car is Monday. Then I gotta find out with what I'm rental. gonna do, huh? Yeah, the, the rental, rental car, the rental. Yeah. So then I gotta find out what I'm gonna do to get around. Um, yesterday, no, two days ago. <laughs> so Tuesday, um, I had just gotten out of a meeting with my boss. Uh, we were talking about all the things, you know, you know, just a little touch up of what I've been doing, like the, um, the digital marketing and the, the uh, traditional marketing, the billboards I got up, the social media posts I scheduled, the SEO, blah, blah, all, all, all that stuff. The meetings I got coming up, all that stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, not 10 minutes later after that meeting, I actually got a call from HR. And this Whoa. HR, because I was recruited for this job through a different company. So this mm-hmm. is the HR for that company. The recruiting um, company. Yeah. So they called me like 12. And she says, hi, just wanted to verify that you're not going to be working anymore um, after tomorrow, tomorrow's your last day. Um, so just wanted to verify that you're um setting everything up. I'm like, what? <laughs> no. Well, yeah, you had been, but you didn't know that that was the reason you was having all these catch up meetings. <laughs> no, I wasn't having all these catch up. Like, I, those are the means I had scheduled to mm-hmm. like do. It. I wasn't even like catch up means. I was like, no, that's not true. I don't know what you're mm-hmm. talking about. And then she says, yeah. Um, and tomorrow's your last day. Um, so, so I was like, is there any reason why? They're like, I don't really know. I just called to tell you. So I'm like, mm-hmm. well, let me ask and uh, you can find out on your end and we'll talk later. So I text my supervisor. I'm like, what's going on? They just told me that I don't work there anymore. For the first time, there was no response. <laughs> so I'm like, what's happening? So I'm like, hello, are you there? I text her, I called her. Um, and I was doing that all the way from one to like four, trying to get mm-hmm. in touch with her. Um, but, and then while I was doing that, I would periodically get emails from the HR people. They're like, oh, we're sorry. We didn't mean for um, you to 
find out or or we didn't mean for you to um to get that message. It was our mistake. It was our bad. Um, uh, but we didn't mean for you to get that message. So the message from the recruiting company. Yeah, the message from like the first call. So I'm like, okay, so I'm not fired. <laughs> so right. I so four. Wait, 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 wait. So the recruiting company called and told you that you weren't meant to get that message. Yes. No. 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 They emailed me to let me know that I wasn't okay. supposed to get that message. So now I'm extra confused as to why my boss isn't contacting me back and why they sent me that message. So like 4, 3.30 comes around. Uh, I get a call from the HR director of that company and mm-hmm. of the recruiting firm. And then she tells me, basically, because it's, it's going to be a long story. She tells yeah. me that um that they weren't supposed to call me yesterday that I wasn't going to have that I wasn't going to be working anymore on that that Wednesday was my last day they were supposed to call me on Tuesday that Wednesday was was my last day they were supposed to call me on Wednesday to let me know that Wednesday was my last day wow yeah so you fired but they just got the day wrong yeah so, so I'm like, so I get, crazy. so I get no notice, no anything. Like, no one's even told me the reason why I had meetings lined up. Like, there are still things in the air with the um gravel designer. So, what, what are you talking about? So then she tells me that the reason that they listed that I was fired was because there was no more money in the budget to support my position. Oh, oh my God! So they just—I've heard that. I've exactly. heard that kind of shit before. So, so I was like, so there's like no, but so then I told her there, there's been like no communication with my supervisor since I asked her what was happening, and then she's like, yeah, that usually happens because once we tell you, all communication is supposed to be cut off. I'm like, okay. So around four thirty. Um, my Microsoft is stripped away, and okay. and I get a notice that um that they're sending a box for the laptop. So I'm like, oh god, whatever. So yeah, right. That is also something that I'm going through, and um, <laughs> my it's also fucking nuts, huh? I said it's also fucking nuts that they. This it just seems, it just feels unprofessional. It does. Like for a multi billion dollar company, it just feels very unprofessional. <clears throat> I like have any conversation or mm-hmm. from my job and them. Like that feels really weird to me. Like especially right. after we just finished talking. Like like see, we had a good conversation. So. That feels on brand though for most like corporate jobs because like they'll have a conversation with you all smiles and shit and be like oh just catch me up on all the work you've been doing like get me up to you know get me up to speed because they know they can't let you go and they need to get up to speed so they can give all your work to somebody else. I know, but there was no way she could catch up with all my stuff because like a lot of my well she would have to hunt through my emails and I delete a lot of them mm-hmm. so. But she she because I was talking with a lot of third party people as well so but. Yeah. Whatever. And use a you use a contractor, so you know, contractors always get short end of the stick. Yeah, I was, but I, I didn't think it was supposed to happen like that. <laughs> so that was that. But also, the third thing that is happening in this month of October is my sister was actually diagnosed with cancer. Oh and, no! Yeah. And she has been going through her, like, she had the surgery. She's been going through chemo and everything. So mm-hmm. that has been another thing that I have yeah. been, like, thinking. Is she living in the house with you? No, she comes visit. Like, it was so weird because she had just um, moved to Buckhead. Uh, and then, like, two weeks later, we got this message. So, mm-hmm. Are you going to shave your head in solidarity with your sister? I mean, she hasn't shaved her head yet. Like, but when she does, are you? Yeah. 
I mean, but my hair grows back fast, so I don't really know. And plus, my hair is always like this. Would you shave your head? To be in solidarity with my sister for cancer, it's, it's tough, man. It's tough. That's a real tough one. Um, mm, I, maybe I would cut, I would trim my locks. <laughs> maybe I would just like donate my hair. I would like cut off a, a, a length of my locks so that someone could make a wig for her. I would do that. So, so you would be back like shoulder length or chin length then? Yeah, probably better like, like chin length. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Well, you don't love your sister like I do. <laughs> I do love my sister. And I would give her my hair. That's how much I love my sister. Um, But yeah, that has been my last week and that's why but you, you had two jobs so you still got the other job though yeah oh no i i quit the other job a long 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 time ago because um, they weren't paying me i didn't tell y'all this you i feel like you might have mentioned it but i didn't know they weren't paying you yeah so the other job i quit like a few months ago because they weren't paying me so mm -hmm. i had to like beg for my checks they weren't coming so i just like set her up for Q4 and Q1, and that's my community service for the year. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Um, DeMarcus, if I may liven things back up a little bit, uh, I just want to tell you, um, no, I, I just want to put you on to something. Okay. I watch this new Netflix anime called Pluto. And oh, do you saw it? Well, yes. I was gonna put them on the same thing. Go ahead. Oh, 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 well, well, I'll do something else. You can you can do Pluto. No, no, no. Let's talk about Pluto. All right. So I've been watching Pluto, and it's like a spin-off or a continuation, or it's a something of Astro Boy. But it's more. Yo, it feels like Astro Boy. I was saying that. Yeah, it he's Astro like... Boy. Pluto is Astro Boy, or the the kid? no, not Pluto, but the little kid. The little boy, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the little okay. boy's Astro Boy. The the scientist guy was in there, like like it's it's Astro Boy, but Astro. um, Astro. <laughs> but yeah, it's like a grittier version of that, um, where you live in this world where there are laws sanctioning um, that robots can live beside you. And by live beside you, I mean these robots have families. They are adopting children. They are like actual sentient beings that, you know, you can't hurt, kill, or murder. Um, and, it, and it tells, and like along with the over arching mystery of the story it also mm -hmm. tells the vignettes of the seven most powerful robots and mm -hmm. how they live in that society so it's a really 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 great story the first the first episode really got me because the first 30 minutes you are you know with this detective trying to figure out what's going on then the next 30 minutes you are warped to this quality of life drama where this military robot is trying to reform his ways and take care of this elderly man so yeah it was a very interesting um movie to watch not movie um tv show to watch but it is long <laughs> like yeah, it not... is long it, i keep falling asleep on it it's long as hell and cause what really gets me about it and i and i've I watched it i'm trying to watch it with my girl um, and she was like into it. She really liked it. Um, but what gets me about it is that like these episodes could be cut in half. Because like you said, like 30 minutes of the episode is like one thing. And then the next 30 minutes is like something completely different. I was like, you could have just cut this in half and gave us twice as many episodes. That way I wouldn't be falling asleep in the middle, forgetting what's going on. Um, but it is a dope ass show. And it was definitely giving me like Astro Boy, Cyborg 009 vibes. With the seven yeah. Vibes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, they're not 
22 minutes to a half hour. They're not even that 45 minutes. Like the first episode I looked at it, it said one hour and 16 minutes. <laughs> so they're not playing with this story. They are actually um, telling the full story. And it feels like they're telling the full story in these eight episodes. Um, they are being very complete with it with these episodes because i know i was watching the first one on the mm -hmm. stairs and i didn't notice that it was going to be an hour and 16 minutes until i went back and and like looked i was like how long is this episode again because i've been up here for 30 minutes now and this tank is still trucking so yeah but but yeah pluto it is a really good interesting interesting anime very interesting hell yeah i agree and i can't agree more and i and everybody out there listening go watch pluto uh it's like eight episodes each one's like an hour and some hours can change uh but great anime and i i want to see like like i said i've been falling asleep on it so um i gotta watch like all that well not all that but like, i gotta start like probably like episode three and, like watch them all the way through and so i can really figure out what's going on um but yeah, it's it's crazy that it's like an Astro Boy spinoff or prequel or something like that. Maybe it's maybe it's not a prequel because like because in the Astro Boy story, like the Doctor like creates Astro Boy and he's like the first robot of his kind. Yeah, yeah, it's obvious it's not a prequel because the wars already happened. He's already an established superhero in this world. Like the newscasters are very familiar with the Astro Boy. Um, so it's not uh, new. So he's been around yeah. for a while in this world. So yeah, so, but yeah. He, but he's like he's like you know touted as like a peacemaker. He's a peacemaking robot. Like he, you know, like he was one of the robots that like introduced like show humanity like oh uh, artificial intelligence robots can be friendly and all this kind of stuff. So that's what that's his whole thing. But, but uh, yeah, I mean, I'm 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 interested to see the end. I'm I'm excited about it. Uh, yeah, it's a good show. Sure. Yeah. All right. So Great that was friend. not. Uh, is there anything else you want to talk about before we actually go into the show? Mm -hmm. Well, uh, shout out uh, our co our co host who couldn't be here today, Mister Lorente. Uh, you know he's been trying to juggle this new life we live in. So, so get, him, get him back regularly. Yeah. Do you think he's gonna be back on? Oh yeah, definitely. I talked to him at homecoming. He's like, yeah, he's definitely trying to be a part of it. He overslept the one time, and then another time something else had happened. Um, like, he just he, like it was a, we was recording on a uh, on an off day, uh, so not on our regular Tuesday. We wasn't so we was recording on like a Monday, and he's like, damn, it just slipped his mind or whatever. Um, you know, and I keep telling them like use your fucking calendar like an adult. But we'll see what happens with that. But he definitely he definitely still wants to be on the podcast. He's definitely still invested and committed. So that's the so so you talked to him privately after homecoming today. You talked to him privately today as well. Today? No, I talked to him at homecoming. All right. Well, we'll have to talk about that off the pod because I don't like talking about people when they're not here unless they're celebrities. <laughs> mm -hmm. So let's go ahead and um, start this episode of Black Geek Energy. B-G-E-N. Therapy did not work for me. And let me tell y'all about it. So I had to attend therapy through my old job and it was horrible. I had this Russian intern who was my therapist, and she was not relatable at all. Then we both had a language barrier that we had to go through every time we talked. Also, she made me come to our therapy sessions at 4 p.m. on Fridays. And you know I had to drive through downtown Atlanta traffic Wow, it was in its peak. Now, I have said on this podcast, that I not going to therapy again and that I just need people to tell me what their therapist says to them so I can use their advice on myself. But you know what? 
I may have to rethink that. Y'all, BetterHealth is an online counseling service that allows you to connect to a licensed therapist from the comfort of your own home or boat or cruise ship, car, or wherever you may be. The best part is you can switch therapists at any time and you have full access to virtual sessions through text, phone, and video conferencing. No matter what you're going through, BetterHelp has a professional who can help. And because you're a listener to Black Geek Energy, you can get 10% off your first month by visiting BetterHelp.com slash BGEpod. That's BetterHelp.com slash BGEpod for 10% off your first month. So go ahead, take care of your mental health today, check out BetterHelp, and let's get and back to the back, show. welcome back everybody to another great episode of Black Geek energy uh as we said before the break just me and your boy jerry here holding it down shout out to our missing co-host Lorante. he'll be back in proper form uh as soon as we can get a hold of him. um but yeah so today we're talking about anime studios um a specific anime studio um the first and only black owned anime studio in japan uh, Dark Stijo. I don't know if I'm saying it right, and so somebody correct me if I'm not. But uh, let's start with uh, Jerry. What do we know about Dark Stijo? Oh wow, Dark Dark Stijo. So I have um, read their portfolio, and I know that they have done a lot of great work. Um, mm-hmm. They do a lot of the secondary animations. I think it's called um, on some of our most popular. Um, animes like JoJo's Jar- um, Bizarre Adventures, One Piece that um, Lorante loves, Overlord Season 2 and 3, um, The Seven Deadly Sins, Revival of the Commandments, ooh, and Tokyo Ghoul that I'm watching right now. So they do a lot of uh, the secondary animation, the second key animation, but they have also had a lot of work that they have done um, including most recently, because I was on their Instagram, they did the actual promo for the the city of a city in Tokyo. Um, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, so so yeah, <laughs> I'll take it back to you. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, like a lot of that, uh, they do a lot of uh, animations. I know they work on a lot of music videos with uh, some of your favorite artists and. You know, they own the come up. Like, since I've seen the announcement of these guys, like, I've started to see their work a lot more often. Um, and the uh, founder, the owner of uh, Dark Stijo is uh, Arthur Isom. I think I'm pronouncing his name correctly. But, yeah. Uh, yeah, like, man, I would love to know, like, how he got, how he how he came to, like, found it, found uh, this thing. Like, what, 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 what prompted that? Um, and I'm looking at trying to look up his story as we speak, but I can only imagine what it's like to be a black man in uh in Tokyo trying to mm-hmm. do uh trying to trying to do a, a anime studio. Yeah. Because you know, as much as we love, you know, Japanese art, Japanese people, Japanese culture, they uh they don't really uh love us back. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, especially because he does a lot of out of the box things with anime like i know that you mentioned that he did a lot of music videos well he's done um music videos for i spice i see her on here um i thought i saw the mm-hmm. weekend um i i saw um what is this who else do i have yeah i saw the weekend um they also did uh if you watch star wars visions which is a lot of um which is like some shorts made in the um in the Star Wars universe. They did a Star Wars vision story. Um, uh, they did a song with Little Uzi Vert. So, so yeah, they do a lot of black um uh, centered things from a black perspective, which I don't think they have a lot of 
uh, a a lot of um, uh, of that going on <laughs> in in yeah. Japan. So it's good to have somebody who is a part of our culture leading a studio as they're making things that represent our culture. Um, yeah. yeah, no, I agree with that, and I think that's uh, like I'm reading about him as we speak, and like I think that's part of uh, from what I'm reading. That's a big part of why like, why he started uh, his own studios. That like um, he brings up uh, talking about Shaman King, uh, like one of the the black characters on there. I don't remember his name, but like was a was a clown, and I know we both remember Mr. Popo from uh, fucking Dragon Ball, yeah, and Dragon Ball Z, like definitely straight a copy of like what a minstrel uh, looked like from back in the Jim Crow days. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, Arthur, Mr. Isom was like, you know, it's not, it's not right that, you know, whenever you see a black, a black person in anime, they're either evil, they're cool. They're trying to make somebody evil, trying to make them cool, trying to make them funny. And that he wanted like a more, a more holistic representation of people of color in anime. Um, And while like we haven't seen more black people, uh, if you look at uh, Michiko and Haching, uh, I think that's a good representation of like black people. Uh, uh, what was the other one? Say that again, uh, Michiko. Michiko and Haching. I think I might be saying the name wrong. No, Michiko and Haching. No, I'm saying it right. Okay. Oh, I, 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 I've never seen this. Yeah, so it's a black woman in that thing. Yeah, mm. she's the main character. She taking care of like a little. Look like a little mulatto girl. Uh, so I'm sorry for cutting you off, but yeah. Nah, but yeah. Uh, like Michiko and Hachin, um, Cannon Busters. Uh, you know, you see some good representation there. If you remember Cowboy Bebop, Jet was black. Um, yeah, and so like while we have seen like a little bit of growth in that area, is it hasn't really been there. Which, you know, I'm I'm, a, I'm of two minds on this because I get it because it's like. This is a Japanese art form. They're pretty like isolated country and there are really no black people there. So how would they know, right? On the other side, on the other side of it is like your like these uh these platforms, these uh you know, these these properties, anime in, as a whole is becoming like a worldwide phenomenon. And I've always watched anime and be like, "Oh, these folks look white." And there's always been the, you know, the conversation we've had it before like this person like these pretty people are supposed to be Japanese, but they got blonde hair and blue eyes. Mm-hmm. Uh, think about Dragon Ball Z again. When you know when they go Super Saiyan, they get blonde and they have blue eyes, and that's when they. And this is their. This is supposed to be like their most powerful form. You know what yeah. I'm saying? So I've always I've always recognized that like white people and people of other cultures have been represented in anime and like you know all over it in in multiple in a multitude of ways and. Is, I'm glad to see that there's now a studio that is putting black people in that same place or people of color in general in that same space to be able to be represented by, you know, all kinds of in all kinds of roles, because we don't just have to be the cool guy. We don't just have to be the funny guy. We definitely don't have to just be the villain. Um, and I want to see, you know, black vampires and whatnot. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm not really sure how much they did on Castlevania, but I think that the Black people, um, the Black representation, the Black stories, and the Native American stories were some of the best I have ever seen in any anime. Um, from the representation, like uh, the 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 villain, I, like I've seen that one fight where she is... Um, fighting mm-hmm. that person in the hallway and not the hallway but the prison and like they, they compare it to Beyonce which is the highest of praise mm-hmm. so uh so yeah uh like I've seen that multiple times on the internet um but but I'm like you know you can do this with black people and they can be the villains but when yeah. you talk about representation mm-hmm. Um, they also had somebody who uh, invoked, you know, the the African gods of iron and war uh, uh, when she used her powers. So that was another thing that I really, really enjoyed. 
um in that in that story and they had a mulatto boy <laughs> who was uh who was saying you guys not saying that word i know i used it earlier but <laughs> mulatto was a, a pejorative term <laughs> so 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 what do you say person um you just say mixed okay. I, I think that's a better, a better way to approach that okay well a mixed boy who was singing opera um so yeah it, it is some great representation um that they are adding to a lot of this anime that you know the anime world sorely needs mm-hmm, mm-hmm. i agree i agree yo um and so you know i'm looking at uh dr sajo's website as we go through here they found it in 2016 by arthur and his brother darnell i love love that he got a thrown american name <laughs> yeah um but yeah they, they they go they sought to like revolutionize the japanese anime industry by introducing westernized elements of art and storytelling into the japanese standard of animation animation uh let's see the, the word staijo is a play on words in both english and japanese to reflect their commitment to building a strong foundation centered on our artists and clients uh Daiji Gai Daiji found uh, loosely, I guess loosely translated to the foundation is important is the original phrase that they saw and they just uh, switched it over to Dark Daijo. Uh, let's see. Used by the background artist here to mean, yeah, the underpaint, the underpainting or foundation of art. Yeah, but I mean, so far, so everything I've seen them do so far has been like immaculate. Like even the stuff that I'm not particularly interested in like i'm not watching no ice rice video but, like, <laughs> <Why not? laughs> but like the clips i've seen of it amazing so did um did the art shy joe did they do mm-hmm. um yasuke did did they work on yasuke i feel like that would be very appropriate um let me look it up Yeah, they did work on Yasuke, looks like. So what did mm. you think about that? Because I've heard mixed things. Oh, I really, I really liked it. I really, I really enjoyed it. Um, what really got me is like towards the end, I feel like they went in a different direction than the whole show had been going in. So mm. like say if they were, I don't remember how many episodes they were, but say if they were like 10 episodes, episodes one through seven were all like feudal Japan mystic magic and mysticism you know you know spirits and ancestors and type that type of deal and then episodes eight through ten they start throwing in mechs they start throwing in like other kind of stuff really the, it was the mechs that really threw me off like once they i was like i was like where do these mechs come from like what are we <laughs> what are we doing <laughs> well you know they they had uh steampunk mechs <laughs> right. so it wasn't just mechs but but yeah, uh, I I I didn't mind that either. I I definitely like the mysticism. I definitely also really like the um the feudal Japan. I know that um there were a lot of animes that I watched after that where it uh was in that era of feudal Japan. Um, but mm-hmm. but yeah, watching that and being immersed in that world and having this black main character that everybody was circling around was very 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 interesting and surreal to me like i was like everybody wants to know him where everybody is gonna know him Mm -hmm. and he's fighting everybody in this show and you're not cutting away from him yet (laughs) yeah so uh uh, i'm trying to trying to figure out like what is what are some of the things that uh dark stigel has worked on or like has done like all the work on but it looks like most of those things are the like the uh the indigo ignited teflon funk trailer uh sounded they did two episodes of sound and fury i don't even know what that is but they did uh they did it looks like they they got like a bunch of music videos now that's where they that's where like they that's where they 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 money is really well not their money is really coming from but that's where they really get to do like the whole thing but, and, but when we're talking about like the animated, you know, in love, Tokyo Ghoul, Overlord, JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, 
um, Fire Force, they're usually doing like the key animation, which is pretty still pretty important. So the key animation is animating, is like drawing the pivotal moments in the anime. So mm. you're drawing like the main scene. Um, like the fight really, scenes. Yeah, yeah. So let me let me take a look, read a little bit more here. Yeah, so the the pivotal moments in the animation, uh basically defining the motion without actually completing the cut. So mm. yeah, so if it's somebody doing a kick or something. They draw the they draw the point of contact, and then somebody else gonna fill in like you know, from the from the ground to the face or whatever. Nice. So let me ask you this: Do you think, because um, we talk about Mappa a lot, Attack on Titan this mm-hmm. Saturday? Do mm-hmm. you think that they can go head to head, toe to toe, with Mappa? I want to say yes. I want to say yes real bad. I want to say it's real bad, but um, not yet. I'm going to say not yet. Because they like, I think you talk about studios like uh, like MAPPA, like uh, Toei, um, you know, Tokyo TV. Um, like, these studios have, like, huge anime properties that have sort of, like, defined their studios mm-hmm. or their studio has to find these huge anime properties i think that's a better way to say it so like you like you you know when you hear toa animation you think of dragon ball z you know what i'm saying when you hear map or you think of attack on titan you know like there are these direct connections to like entire properties versus you know dark style like when you hear you think you think the black anime studio which is dope but they don't have i don't think they have that that quintessential title that they've like brought to life from a from a manga. And I don't I hope they get there quick. I hope they're already working on something. Um I hope they have like original stuff that's gonna like completely break the uh you know break the scene, you know, break the industry. Um but you know realistically it might take them a while to get there. It's still pretty new. 2016, this has only been around for what seven years at this point. Yeah. Their um scene in Star Wars Visions 2 was pretty pretty um good. But mm-hmm. is there any character or any anime that you could see being redone um, uh, by Dark Dark Shigo? Daijo, yeah. Um, man, so many, so many. Um, off the top of my head, I can see them. I can see them redoing Full Metal. Uh, I feel like they'll do they do an amazing job on that. I can see them doing like something like Blood Plus, because um, they uh, like a lot of their style is like real. Excuse me, it's like it's like real. It's like they have like a real pop style where like you look at it and like the colors are bright, the the animation is like really engaging. It's like really, what's the words I want to use here? Like it, it really. I'm gonna go back to the same word. It really just really pops out at you. You know what I'm saying? It looks like it's kinda, it's coming off the screen, popping off the page. It it looks great, and I, so I think they could. I think I can see them doing like some Naruto stuff. You know, if there's ever a remake of that, but shoot, that just ended, so it's probably not gonna come for a while. And if they ever did remake it, I want them to make it shorter. Made that thing like 300 episodes and call it a day. Um, yeah, I would like to see them do something. Along the lines, you know, I, I I like to see people get killed and murdered <laughs> in mm-hmm. um, anime, but I would like to see them do some episodes of, um, we were just talking about this last week. Um, hold on, what's his name? Ito? Junji? Junji Ito? Yeah, of some Junji Ito tales. Mm-hmm. Um, just like if they did an analogy where they said, okay, now this uh, studio does this, this, this studio does this. I would like to see how they um, could incorporate, you know, their art style into a Junji Ito tell. Um, and I would also like to see them do some um, episodes of ReZero. Because just like you said, mm. um, it's really, really emotional. And I think that lately you can tell no that our starts really emotional lady you can tell with this last season that the emotion didn't really hit as much 
as it did the first season. The fight scenes didn't hit as hard as they did the first season. So I really think that Dark Shadow could revamp that animation and make it a little bit more um, engaging to um, its different audiences. So, yeah. No, I would say, and I, and I like ReZero, and I got to, I got to finish watching that one. I know you really fuck with ReZero, but I haven't seen it all yet because I, mm-hmm. I just, I just kind of fell off of it. Dang, so, so you didn't get to the clown. Clown, well, I don't know it's about the clown. No. All right, <laughs> get to the clown. Um, in other news, you know that Shield's Shield Hero is back. Is it? I thought they just finished the season or something. No, Shield Hero is back. Oh no, 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 no! I was watching that. Is I, I am watching the new Shield Hero stuff. Yeah, season three, Attack on Titan on Saturday. Um, I'm surprised that's coming. But you know what? It has been a year. Shit. Yeah. yeah. And oh, there was one fast? more. Oh, and what did I? There was one more anime that came back. I can't. Mm, so yeah. Uh but I haven't actually seen the new the new season of um ReZero yet. So I don't know what's going on with that. Mm. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna add it back to my list and see if I can work my way through it. It'll probably be like my uh probably like my second tier anime list where it's like mm-hmm. stuff that's like you like the full season is already out and I can just watch it in between my other stuff day to day so yeah. so so what are you watching right now um watching Jujutsu Kaisen of course um mm-hmm. I'm watching this one called My Daughter Left the Nest and Returned an S Frank Adventurer um so I know I hate anime with long titles like that like it gets on my nerves because what's the point Wait, 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 wait. That sounds like an isekai. So, what? It's not an isekai. Okay. It's not an isekai. It's a. Uh, it's they live in a, like a fan of you know a fantasy world. Um, this dude is. It's more focused on her dad than it is the the girl. So the dad is like lives in this like small town. He was an adventurer when he was young, um, but got his leg bit off, so he had to retire. But apparently, he's like hella strong. But he never really got to rank up as a, a adventurer because he got hurt early on, and you know, the, and he just decided that he couldn't be an adventurer no more. Um, no one ever, no one ever told him like, "Oh no, nah, you got this injury, you can't do it." But his he raised his daughter to be an adventurer, and now she's like the, one of the top adventurers. So it jumps back and forth between like his home life, and he's sort of like taking care of like uh, kids in the village, like orphan kids, and you know, just hanging out with them in the village. Um, and it and her life as a like an adventurer, and she's always like talking about her dad. She done like got him this whole reputation because she's always talking about him, and she's so strong. So folks like, oh, I want to meet your dad. I want to meet your dad. But it's a, it's a really wholesome anime. It's real wholesome. Um, I'm also watching Goblin Slayer, which in the uh, the second season Goblin, of Goblin Slayer is pretty of. straight. You it's liking it? Yeah, it's all right. It's all right. I don't like this uh, the new wizard character they they don't introduce. And what I don't like about Goblin, Goblin Magic and Goblin Slayer is that the people who can use magic, they can use like three spells a day. And that's all they got. <laughs> well, well, except for that one wizard lady. Yeah, she except for her, but I feel like she's times. like hella powerful. Yeah. And and the girl who could use it three times a day, she has been working up to that for a year. <laughs> right. <laughs> and so, and then the the wizard boy who done came on the scene, he can use one spell one time. And he don't even know how to use that right. <laughs> right. And be fucking up. And it's like, yo. It's, but it definitely gives d d vibes in that aspect. Like, when you level one, you got one, you got two spells. Yeah. And then, what you gonna do? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Still watching One Piece. That son got hella dope. They just beat Kaido. Um, you know, L- Luffy is one of the emperors of the sea now, which is hella dope. That's what? crazy. Emperor exactly. The They've sea. taken out so all of so they've pretty much taken down all of the old emperors of the sea, and it's like a whole new, a whole new roster of emperors of the sea. Um, I'm watching Kingdoms of Ruin, which is all right. 
It's about this uh, kid who was raised by witches, but like witches turn out to be like the enemies of the world. So they like oh, capture him and put him in jail, and they kill his uh his adopt basically his adoptive mother, uh because she's a witch. And so when he breaks out of jail, he's like, oh, I'm destroying all of humanity. Period. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And that's called Witches uh, of Ruin. No, it's called the Kingdoms of Ruin. Well, that sounds really good. Mm-hmm. I'm wa- I'm watching Berserk of Gluttony. Me too. I, that was gonna be, and I put you on. Oh my god! Mm, mm, okay, okay. That okay. is so good. I love that show. It's okay. It's it's it's, it's not bad. It's not bad. Um, it gets too meta for me because he's like he spends a lot of time just like talking to his sword, and there's not enough like the story isn't moving fast enough to really have me be like, oh, this is one of the great ones. I still watch it every week, but I ain't writing home about it. His sword uh, got Shang-Lan. all the information, though. Like, he didn't have no information on nothing that was going on in his mm-hmm. life. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> and I hate that. Um, I'm watching uh, Shangri-La Frontier. That okay, was yeah, really you said that. That's an, that's an isekai, I think. Uh, well, mm, he's not playing really. a game. So. Yeah, not, not really an isekai. Mm-hmm. But that was hella good. I love that one. And then I'm watching the Moroni Kitchen remake. Mm-hmm. How's which that? is it's it's good. It's a it's a good remake, but it's just it's, it's exactly the same as the original. So mm, like it's one to maybe one. maybe a little bit of bridge, maybe a little bit of bridge, but it, otherwise exactly the same as the original. Man, I'm watching I'm watching this one called Under Ninja, and it's kind of weird because it's like ninja in the modern day world. So they got like they got like bulletproof like hoodies and like camouflage jackets and shit. To where, like, you put on the jacket, you pull up a little mask and zip it up, and it camouflages like your entire upper body, but not your lower body, because mm. <laughs> it's just a jacket. Uh, wow. And it's it's not exciting, but it's 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 not it's not bad to watch. Uh, let's see, I'm watching I'm watching Shield Hero, and I'm watching this one called Freerin. Yes, I heard about that. I need to start watching that one. They said it's like yeah. um what what's the one about the the marble that turns into a boy that can turn into other people? Um, oh, 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 uh uh not the promised neverland neverland. That no, one is called the other one. Seeing if I'm trying to see if it's on my list. It's not right now, but it's I forget what it's called, but I know exactly what you're talking about. All right. Well. Yeah, but that's it's everything like on English watch. something. English something. I don't think it's called English nothing. Like, I can hear that theme song in my head right now. That's going to drive me wild. To your eternity. To your eternity. There it goes. There it you, goes. You, to you, your eternity. You were not letting us move on until you got that name. I wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, they say that free rent is like to your eternity, kind of. Kind of. Kind of. It's more with about the um, that it involves. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's super emotional, uh, super heartfelt. Uh, more about um, how, like, what this mage is doing. She's an elven mage, so she's got like a long life. And what she's doing with her life after she's traveled with like this hero and like defeated the demon king or whatever. And it's pretty good. It's pretty interesting. Mm. Um, and it's, it gets really emotional because she like has to watch her party die. Like the people that she's traveled with. Um, so I think it was like four of them in the hero's party. It was her, a dwarf, a priest and the hero. Mm-hmm. And the priest and the hero have died. So it's just her and the dwarf left alive. But the dwarf mm-hmm. is like Hello, oh, he already, you know, he on death's door. Oh, no. Um, those are good choices. I need to start watching Freer Free Ren, and mm-hmm. I'm going to pick up Kingdom of Ruin. Um, mm-hmm. But I want to do two more since we're in this winter anime season. Um, I want to do um, Good Night World, and that is on Netflix. Night World? Good Night World. Oh, Good Night World. Yeah. Yes. So that's on Netflix, and it's about this these people in this immortal called world, and they are the highest loving people 
I mean, the highest leveled people in that world, they can defeat anything and they live like as a family. Um, but oh, they don't... I've, I've read about this one. Mm. Go ahead. Um, but they they live together as a family, but they don't know who each other are in real life. Come mm-hmm. to find out, they're actually the actual family um, of the people. All right. What are you doing? Nothing. It doesn't look like nothing. Are you are you touching yourself? <laughs> Technically, yes. <laughs> Okay, let me turn your camera off. Not my penis, though. Okay, not your penis. All right, well. I'm touching my leg. All right, don't touch your penis. I got, but, I got, I got like a scar or something. I was just trying to figure that out. Well, don't agitate it. You're gonna, gonna make it worse. Don't tell um, me what to do with my body. My body, my choice. <laughs> but yeah, so in actuality, this immoral family is an actual family and they don't know um, that they're living in the same house with the people who mm-hmm. they are um, playing the game with. And they are dysfunctional. Like they don't like each other. They don't talk to each other at all. There's this one, um, this one person who's the brother, he's like makes a plus and he is always like picking on the little one who is like a neat and, and then the dad, uh, he is kind of low key abusive, <laughs> but mm. it's really good. And yeah. and I, right. oh, and I'm also watching this one called Undead Unluck. Um, it's, it's is that a, on Netflix too? That's on Hulu, and okay. uh, it's about this guy who can't die. And he cuts off hmm. his body, like his hand or his legs, and then he'll use his blood to project himself. Like you'll see him flying with no legs, just like a trail of blood uh, uh, leading him on his flight path. Um, so mm-hmm. and and then uh, there's Unluck, who, if you touch her skin, and if she really is connected to you, you will die horribly. <laughs> like suck this. Oh like, shit! But you got to. But she got to know you real well. No, so you won't die. She doesn't know. Like she said that she didn't really know her grandfather, and she touched her grandfather, and he just um, broke his leg. So, but no, she doesn't have any friends. She can't like it opens up with her about to commit suicide. So. Like, this story is it's 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 made to be funny but it's kind of sad <laughs> it's kind of mm. sad if you like are are studying it and i like watch it when i do cardio so i'm like trying to like like get into what i'm watching instead of getting into my tiredness so yeah undead unlucky. I, I, okay okay i might check those out like i don't want to see a story about an abusive family like that's just that just doesn't doesn't hold appeal to me but like the undead unluck i might get at a shot yeah yeah they're they're abusive i mean like it's not like he doesn't hit him as much <laughs> as as they hit each other in other animes but like they show a lot of flashbacks and it's not a very good household to be in so yeah Mm -hmm. um Mm -hmm. i have another question for you but i'm gonna save that for everybody's favorite part the questions and uh if you come right back you'll hear my next question for demarcus stay tuned all right all right all right all right
All right, everybody, and we are back. This is everybody's favorite part. What is it? The questions. You can Mm -hmm. email us your questions to blackgeekenergy at gmail.com. You can send it in a DM on TikTok and Instagram at blackgeekenergy. And you can tweet us at BGE underscore pod. Um, First question comes from Cindy Lou in Alaska. Cindy Lou wants to know, okay, guys, um, I don't know if I'll make it in in time, but if I do, what will y'all watch um, on Thursday the 2nd? No, no, what will you watch first, Thursday the 2nd? Loki, The Invisible Premiere, or the Gen Z Finale? Loki, Invincible Premiere? Mm-hmm. Or the Gen Z finale. Mm-hmm. Yeah, those are those are all pretty tough. That's a pretty tough lineup. Um, so personally, I like to save the best show for last. Like whatever show I like the most, I'm watching that one last because I want to be, mm, I want to be filled. You know what I'm okay. saying? I want to, and I want to go out on a go out on a high note with a bang. So I'll probably the order I will watch these because I'm gonna watch them all. I will probably watch Loki first. Okay. Then I'm gonna watch Gen, the Gen V finale, and then I'm gonna watch Invincible because I enjoy Invincible the most. And this is gonna be the premiere, right? Yeah. So there's much more Invincible to come. Mm-hmm. So they're only doing um the first episode, and I think that the first half of this season they're only doing three episodes, right? Wow. So, Wait, so they're they're only releasing the first episode today? Yes. And they're only gonna, and there's only gonna be three episodes in the first half of this season, so we won't get to see the next three episodes until, uh, until shoot spring. Yeah, let me just check if that's right. Yeah, because anime now, because like winter season is from like now is like November until what, like March maybe. Yeah, I think they said that the second part will be in um. February. Okay, yeah, February, February, March. That's when the spring anime start. So yeah. Oh no, nope. <laughs> I'm completely wrong. Um, well, hold on. This isn't right. Okay, no, no. I'm looking at the wrong thing. All right, sorry. I was looking at the wrong thing, but yeah. So it's gonna be eight episodes. So I think this other thing Thank Arena God. says that tonight is two episode so okay because usually prime releases more than one episode at a time which i appreciate yeah usually they do sets of three so yeah um okay so let's see it will be a total of eight episodes the first episode is on prime video now and there are still three episodes for the mid-season hiatus so yeah they're gonna release four episodes and then season two will come out to Prime Video at some point in 2024. Okay. Um, going back to the question we had earlier, like what shows we would like to see Darch Daijo get a hold of? Uh, yeah. The Legend of Vox Machina. Hmm. I, think they'll, I think they'll crush that shit. Not, they, not, not strictly in anime, but yeah. They would, but I would like to see them... I don't know, cause I said re zero, so mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I I I just they can do more that. than one anime, man. You know what I'm saying? They ain't gonna just have one anime they working on at a time. Yeah, yeah, but I I kind of like you just said Critical Role. My biggest thing is with Critical Role is that they don't have a person of color on that show. But then I said re zero mm-hmm. for mine, so yeah, yeah. They do got uh, cause the the voice of a uh, Uriel um the. Uh, of Sovereign Uriel, that's the the black guy. Yeah, but he's not like a main character. He's not. He is not. You yeah. are correct. He's not a main. Um, not in this I, campaign. I think I'm gonna go ahead and watch Loki first because that last episode, dang, they they did something crazy. Did you see the last episode? Or was she? Oh nah, man, I ain't seen it yet. Okay, so they did some crazy. I won't watch no TV for real. <laughs> they did some crazy last episode and ended with a bang. Um, then I'll watch Invincible. Go ahead and get that out of my system. Then uh, I think I will say Gen V 
before the gym tomorrow. Okay. So yeah. Um, my second question, Demarcus. This is from Jesse in Brooklyn. Um, Demarcus, you have a dinner. You can pick four fictional characters to sit at your table to gain knowledge and insights about life. Who are you picking? Four folks to sit at my table to gain knowledge and insight about life. Well, I guess I am, or five people total, including me? Yes, five right. people total, including you. Bet, bet. Um, shoot, that's a good question, bro. Um, let me think. Give me a second here. I think I would do Edward Elric. You know what I'm saying? I feel like he'll have some good like life advice. Who's what? Huh? <laughs> Edward, Edward Elric from Full from Metal. Full Metal Alchemist. Okay. Yeah. The older brother. Okay. The younger. Um. Um. Let's see. I think I want. Let me scroll through my anime list real quick. That'll help me out here. I low key would want Luffy at the table, or no, not Luffy. Shanks. I want Shanks at the table because he's like he just be dope to talk to. Uh, let's see. Uh, the dude from Doctor Stone. The doctor. Yeah, the doctor from Doctor Stone. The little kid, because he's like he'll be able to uh do some badass shit, and then um. Uh, is his name Rioya from Food Wars? I, I never seen Food Wars. Just Man, the the main character from Food Wars, because if he had a table, dinner for to be bomb. <laughs> oh, that's that's true. That's true. Yeah, Rioma. I think his name is Rioma. Okay. All right. Like it's gonna be so good, my clothes gonna fall off. Gonna just rip themselves off my body. Obviously, yeah. So I'll I'll steal that one from Food Wars. <laughs> you can pick food... somebody else from Food Wars. You ain't got to pick Rioma. I've never seen that show. I just seen their food. I mean, their clothes being wiped off. Uh, yeah, I would I would pick him from Food Wars because right. I I I need a good meal. Um, mm -hmm, I would mm -hmm. also pick Shuri, um, Black Panther's sister. Um. Mm -hmm. Because I believe that she would give some insights. And I think that she could bring, you know, a young wisdom to the table. Yeah. Okay, so that's two. I would also pick Sebastian Shaw. Um, oh. Not necessarily a hero, but somebody who definitely has some connections. Somebody who definitely has money. And, and you know, I, I think that they got this question from like the Jay Z thing of would you pay yeah. five thousand or yeah so yeah. Sebastian Shaw could tell me how to get some money okay illegally okay. <laughs> or legally <laughs> or illegally <laughs> e either way I need it right now either way we rich <laughs> <laughs> yeah and um for my last one I, I would pick Eric Lindshear um mm. because heavy X Men heavy on the X Men yeah very heavy very heavy uh, so yeah was that four food wars sherry eric x-men yeah that's four i want to yeah. switch a couple of mine because i didn't <laughs> I, I had trapped myself in the anime universe and didn't think of like comic books and stuff so i, I will want professor fictional. x me and him, you did you didn't say any fictional and i just didn't it didn't click all the way in my mind so i won't i want to keep rioma i want professor x uh, i want to keep edward elric because he went through some shit and I feel like he'll just have like some good life advice. Um and then uh shoot. Maybe uh maybe Peter Parker. Spider-Man. I'm surprised it's not Mount Lady. Um, or <laughs> ooh, no, no, no. Did I say Tony Stark? No, you did not. Okay, Tony Stark, not Spider-Man. So I mean, he's Rioma, Professor X, uh Edward Elric, and Tony Stark. So I got to ask, why are you breaking bread with that man? With who? 
Charles. With Charles Xavier. Because, man, Charles is like a human like the rest of us. And I want to hear his thought process in some of the decisions that he's made. You know what I'm saying? I want to be able to talk to him about that shit, like, you know, in a small group. You're going to ruin dinner. I'm not. I don't think so. You you got two super villains at your at your shit. So your dinner is ruined before it even starts. Magneto's not a super villain. He's a superhero. Okay. So let's get that right. Sebastian Whoa. has made questionable choices in the past, but as I said, mm-hmm. um, I got him on there for some for purely for self gain. So I'm a super villain if that's the case. I hear what you're saying, and I do not approve. Well, I don't approve of Charles because knowing Charles, you'll walk out of that dinner and you won't have, and your whole family won't even know who you are. I don't think that's going to happen. Charles ain't going to do me like that. But boy, yeah. boy, Charles is not going to do me like that. You know what? You're probably right because Charles would never touch a human. He just does that to his best friends and fellow mutants. So, whatever. Mm. All right, man. All right. We know you hate Charles Xavier. Get off his dick. With a passion. So, so you read the, the, the end of the H Club, uh, uh, the, the Hellfire. Yeah, I got to the end of it when he on that island by himself. So what he did didn't enrage you. Did. But remind me what he did. He mentally um commanded all the mutants on earth to go into these unknown oh, portals. Yeah. By, and he by killed orcs. them all. And he killed them all. Yes. Supposedly. Yeah, now that shit was stupid. But he was tricked though. He was tricked. No, he was given the option either. Banish all mutants, or we kill a human every time we see a mutant. <laughs> Guess it's going to be a he world chose, full, of, full of mutants. He chose, he, chose, he chose to say the he chose to say the uh, to say the mutants, but that was going. But like you got to think about humans. how that was going to play out. Say the say the humans. Um, but you got to think about how that was going to play out. Like that was going to start a a, a a war against mutants. Not that they ain't never faced that before, but like like he trying to he was trying to he was trying to save everybody he could, and he made the wrong decision. It's a war against mutants anyway. Right. All right. So, time for my question. Let's get off. Let's get off this Charles Xavier slander. I hate him. Who I has him. this this question is coming from Catherine in Atlanta? Okay. Um, who has the better parenting skills, Vegeta, or who has the worst parenting skills? Goku or Vegeta? Goku. <laughs> Like, like, isn't that a thing already on the internet? Really? Goku. I mean, yeah. I think, I think Goku is just like an absent parent until you're like old enough to train and fight. Whereas Vegeta is whooping on your ass as soon as you come out the womb. No, Vegeta actually loves his children. He doesn't the, think Goku of them. Loves his as, children. No, no. <laughs> Gohan is nothing a um to Goku but a tool of war. Like Vegeta's child is so. actually a child. Like, like no. Nah. No, nah, I mean Vegeta got that one scene where he took trunks to the park and everybody think Vegeta's some good parent. No, because right because you gotta remember right before that scene, Vegeta punched trunks across the room, had that man bouncing off the walls and the floor like a ping pong ball. Didn't he want to be punched across the room though? Like, didn't he no. ask for it? No, he was like, Oh, I'm training with daddy. Like, you know, and Vegeta was like. Oh, if you land a hit on me, we're gonna go to the park. And then they never say nothing about hitting that man back. And then didn't even like hit him like, oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna just tag you back like you tagged me. Hit that man with like damn near all his strength. Well, no. <laughs> uh and let's also remember that Goku was actually dead for most of Gohan's life. So I don't think that makes him a bad parent. I'm dead. Like, what can I like? What are we talking about here? So he's not in their life. So <laughs> and Vegeta abs- yeah, actually like was so in absent that life. at worst. No, no. But yeah, I think I think Vegeta. I think this is this is a this is a close one. It's a toss up, and it depends. And it depends because I think I think Goku was hella good with uh Pan. Like he was always by her side, protecting her and stuff. Like he was hella good with Pan. But he has then, two children. 
He has, yeah, he has two. He has Gohan and Goten. Oh, he has three children. No, Pan is his granddaughter. Oh, okay. Yeah, but you know, parents always soften up with the grandkids. Actually, I think that this could be a whole show. We this could be a whole to, show? Yeah, we need we to gonna... finally talk about parenting. Right. Parenting in anime? <laughs> Yeah, parenting, or parenting in, in, in general. Vegeta and Goku. <laughs> oh, so we're gonna focus it on them too. All right, bet. I mean, bet. I mean, we can bring some more stuff in, but but we'll talk about we can talk about Tony Stark's dad. We can talk about oh, uh man. yeah, we can talk about uh Aunt May and Uncle Ben trying to raise Peter. Yeah, that was another question. Why would you put Peter in your at at, at your table? He's my favorite superhero. Spider-Man is my favorite superhero. Right. One of my favorites. Iron Man's the other one. Yeah. Well, what's your favorite uh incarnation of Peter on the big screen? Hmm. Um, you know, as a 90s kid, I gotta go with Tobey Maguire, but Tom Holland be he be putting up numbers. Tom Holland be putting up numbers. Are you going to see Captain Marvel next weekend? Am I going to see it next weekend specifically? Probably not. You know what? I have not been using my damn movie pass. And it's been months. I need to go to the movies. So I might do, I might will see it next weekend then. If you don't give it to me and I'll Captain to- Marvel or is it the Marvels? The Marvels. Okay, bet. I heard it's gonna be some X-Men in the Marvels. I heard it. I mean, if you saw the end of Miss Marvel, you kind of already prepared. I still haven't watched Miss Marvel, man. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, Miss Marvel is officially an X-Man now, so her powers have not been revealed, but Jesus. And and I think that um Luminary is also a a, a mutant cuz she experienced powers at a young age as well. Which one is Luminary? Uh, the black one, Monica Rambeau. Oh, I didn't think I, her name was Luminary. I thought she was Captain Universe. <laughs> Definitely not Captain Universe. Captain Universe is a a universal entity. Um, hmm. But yeah, she was revealed to actually have mutant powers uh, when she was a very, very, very young girl. So, okay, bit, bit. And it was in her. Um, if I go see the Marvels, I'm only there for Monica Rambeau. You really didn't like uh, Miss Marvel, did you? No, I don't. I don't. I don't like. I read her comic a little bit, and I was like, mm, "This ain't doing it for me." Um, and then Captain Marvel, I just don't like the way they do her on screen. Like, I like Captain Marvel in the comics, love it. On screen, I'm like, mm, "This ain't really doing the character justice." Yeah. Well, if you go see it, make sure you tell me, and I'll I'll just get an Uber. And I'll go out to see it, cause okay, yeah, I gotta. In fact, I may just get an Uber, and that'll be like a hundred dollar trip. Oh, I hate where that. are you gonna go see it? The reason the Uber gonna be a hundred dollars. I mean, I'm seeing it at noon. And I'm not going to like Atlanta Station or nothing. Exactly, it's not gonna be no hundred dollar Uber. You gonna go cross the street in noon? So the trip is twenty. The trip back is 20 at minimum. Uh, the ticket is 20. So that's $60 right there. So it's like 60 to 100 mm, if $60. I, if I don't get nothing. Don't be going out there trying to have dinner and shit too, Jerry. Just go see the movie and then t- bring your ass back home. Um, we'll see. But, um, okay. Anyways, guys, that's the end of Black Geek Energy. I want to thank you all for listening. Follow us and all the little uh, clickables in the description. Uh, and let us mm-hmm, know mm-hmm. if you like this episode of the podcast. Forward it to, um, what did you say his name was? Daryl? Uh, uh, Ar- Arthur and Darnell. Yeah, Darnell. Let them hear what you we You know what? It about. might be now that I now that I know his brother's name is Darnell, his name might be Arthel. <laughs> and they might be twins, Arthel and Darnell. <laughs> yeah. You know, how, this, you know how black folks like name their kids. Yeah, I do. 
for this episode to them. Let them know that we talked about them. And uh, yeah. Um, oh, also uh, view or listen to um, our Dungeons and Dragons episodes um, on the subscription in Spotify. Uh, mm -hmm. You can scroll down and, you know, leave us a review. Uh, let us know how many stars you think this episode was. But yeah, right. guys. Any final words to Marco? What'd you call me? DeMarco. No, oh, okay. Um, nah, I ain't got nothing to say, man. Yeah. Cool. Thanks y'all for tuning in. See y'all next time. VGE -E out. out. All right, let's take a break to check in on our geeks. Um, how are y'all doing? How are y'all feeling? How's your heart? How's your mind? Now, y'all have asked us about mental health before and what our feelings are on mental health. And I say that your mental health is just as important as your physical health, your spiritual health, and your financial health, your fiscal health. And uh, therapy, a lot of times, is a bridge to those other things. Um, so our sponsor, BetterHelp, is here to help us with that and help you with that. And I know a lot of y'all don't believe in therapy. Y'all ain't got time for it. You know, can't nobody tell you how you feel. But that's not what BetterHelp is here to do. What BetterHelp does is that they have licensed professionals that help you understand why you're feeling the way you do and are able to walk you through um, those feelings and help you get to a better place or just to reassure you of where you already are. I'm in therapy myself and I can tell you that it's working for me. So, you know, why not give it a try? You can go to betterhelp.com slash BGE pod. That's beta gamma epsilon pod for 10% off and get started with better help today.